this team is Everton Organics. Uh, they offer quality organic fertilizer that meets the needs of customers that not only wish to garden <coughs> organically, but do so more effectively and efficiently. So their product is a sustainable organic fertilizer and it helps turn uh, what people are putting in the environment into organic, tra of organic trash and into a desired product. So welcome Everton Organics. Hello everyone, I'm uh, Everton Parkinson, I'm president and co-founder of uh, Everton's Organics Incorporated. Uh, I'm a community and environmental planner major and uh, this is my associate. Uh, I'm Sean Whittier, I'm a business analytics major. I'm Alexander Asbury, I'm a political science major. I'm Ian, Mar Ian Marshall, a mechanical engineering major. And the great thing about all of us on our team is we all come from different backgrounds and schools for everything, so we all have something different and unique to offer. So the idea, it all started here at UNH, it actually started a natural resource lecture. Um, the lecture was on sustainability and sustainability with fertilizer. Um, and then the, the lecture primarily focused on the country of Cuba. And in Cuba, when the Soviet Union fell, they weren't able to import their conventional fertilizer because the Soviet Union fell. And in, in addition, with the U.S. trade embargo, they couldn't import any fertilizer. So they had to do everything internally. And their answer was to uh, create a compost and then have it processed by uh, compost worms. And this is basically called uh, worm castings. It's basically the excrement of uh, worms. So they all went to a medium to small size organic farms and they have very sustainable farms since all their fertilizer is made from waste. So the need was to create um, you know, sustainable fertilizer that's chemical free and performs as well, uh, if not better than um, chemical based fertilizers. And that's what we're, we're bringing to market. So our product is all purpose. Um, you can use it on your lawn, you can use it in your gardens, use it in potting plants. You can apply it multiple ways as you saw in the back of the packaging. Um, it's also sustainable and renewable as it's made from waste. It's odorless and non-toxic. It's safe for kids. That's not to worry about any of that. Um, and it's uh, rich in essential nutrients. So all this, the uh, sources where we get all our resources to make our fertilizer comes from three primary sources right now, two in New Hampshire and one in Vermont. Um, and we do have a bi-weekly or weekly schedule to pick up all these uh, resources to make our fertilizer. Um, and I just want to point out, an acre of pastures or grass or whatever um, creates four to six tons of waste a year. So we do have a large um, amount of uh, resources to gather to make our fertilizer. So um, we did get in, top, in contact with a retailer to um, potentially sell our product, and that retailer was Whole Foods. And we wanted to test our product to show that our product did um, compare to conventional fertilizers such as Miracle Grow. This was Miracle Grow on the right. And they both received the same amount of light and water um, over a 21 day period. And as you can see, our product's on the left. It has much bigger stems and leaves. Um, and we also had our, our product tested by um, the UNH uh, Cooperative Extension to show that the nutrients uh, were, you know, were what we said they were, uh, just to show whole foods. Um, and Whole Foods said they loved our product and they would put it on their shelves that day only if we are OMRI certified and that's Organic Material Review Institute. Um, unfortunately, it's very expensive, um, but we do meet the requirements and that is something we are actively seeking right now. So here's a little uh, backup um, study from the Washington State University to show the power from worm castings. Um, as you can see, the, uh, this was carrots, Kentucky carrots. Um, it was 0%, 10%, and 20%. And it just shows the power of worm castings and how it's a real product and, uh, you know, compares with uh, conventional fertilizer. So the process. Our process, you know, we develop and collect our materials from our locations, like I said. Um, and then we do a 14-day hot pile to break it down even further. Um, you know, we, we, we introduce anaerobic bacteria, we turn the pile multiple times a day. Um, to get it really hot and burn off some, you know, um, unwanted like insect larvae or weed seeds, such like that. And then we process it with machinery, and Ian can talk to you a little bit about that. Yeah, so after the hot pile, um, we put the product through a grist mill, and this grinds it up and uh, prepares it for the worms to eat. Um, after they've eaten the material, um, we put it in a trommel, and this basically filters out any debris and stuff that we don't want in the fertilizer. 
Um, right now, this process is a little bit tedious because it's done by hand. So something that we're working on is making it automated with like machines, and um, we want to eliminate any bottlenecks from the process and kind of make it as efficient as possible. And then, you know, like I said, we, we put in the packaging and then we just seal it and it's ready to be uh, sold on the market. And I just want to point out also these, uh, we're the only company that offers resealable bags, so you can actually, um, and we do have one-way valve bags that you can squeeze up the air so it uh, reseals itself. Um, and we are seeking a uh, process path because there's no other company that I've found um, that uses the same methods that we do. We also shave off time um, when producing worm castles by a few months, which is really huge in terms of production. And um, I, you know, I've done a lot of research. And I haven't found anything about it. So, oops. <clears throat> so here's another thing on the process. This is the type of uh, process we use. It's a continuous flow method we use year round. Um, this is a picture of a worm bin that we actually use. Um, it's stacked in trays, and the worms follow the food. You layer it like lasagna, and they go up, upwards. And um, you can collect all of the worm castings at the bottom, so you don't have to go through it and filter it um, initially. And you, just, you can just grab a tray and dump it. Um, like I said, it's year-round, so you can just have it in the warehouse, and as long as you keep around 50, 55 degrees, you're all set. Uh, it's a nice controlled environment. So. <laughs> For the last uh, several months or so, we've reached out and uh, created a cold call list of about 500 local mom and pop shops from Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. And our goal this summer is to reach out to them and try to capture at least 5-10% right off the start and get in those stores. We also are very unique where our team reaches from Maine to uh, Connecticut. So we're, this summer, we are able to go to trade shows and farmers markets to really display and showcase our product off. So, this is our official webpage right here, and our goal is through the process of creating our social media aspect and linking it to our official website. And this is going to allow us to educate our consumers and reach out to them, and also teach them about sustainability itself. We also plan on getting into the New, New Hampshire Home and Market and Garden uh, magazine. It's about a six month ad, it's about $1,800. Yeah, the 80,000 subscribers a year, and 71% of those do buy from that. So even if you can capture 1% of that a month, it'd be huge for the company. So this is a breakdown of our competition, our two biggest com uh, competitors. Uh, Sam's Organics, uh, they have a couple brand names as Wiggle Worms or Uncle Industries. They're based out of Wisconsin. Uh, we did some research over the, the stores that we'd be seeking. Um, a lot of them don't carry their product, and we think that is uh, because they're geologically they're far away and it's a lot, a lot of cost to um, move that product. Uh, they also have a, you know, they're online because they have a lot more traffic. They can, with UPS effects, they have better deals to ship, so they beat us in that aspect. But we do beat them with the OMRI because we do qualify for it. Um, and neither of them uh, can qualify for that because they, they use uh, ingredients that don't qualify. Okay, uh, we're looking for a $750,000 investment in order to scale up um, our company to a point where we can sell all over New England, compete basically. Um, we're looking for an investor who would be willing to uh, negotiate like a combination of an equity, royalties, or a structured loan type of thing. And then talk about so this is the allocation of funds. A lot of it's going to be up front um, initially because we need the machinery, uh, the space. Um, and you know, when we're purchasing worms, the worm bins, it is a large cost, but uh, worms reproduce exponentially, and uh, the worm bins can be reused over and over again since uh, they're made from industrial plastic. Um, as you can see from the uh, model on the left here, um, it's a seasonal representation of our sales over the 34 month period. Um, basically, we're trying to get to initially 50 stores, and um, right now it's looking like uh, like our spring and summer months are going to be our most popular. So as as you can see, it plateaus in the spring and summer, falls, and then rises again. And then on on the right side, right, right hand side, uh, the sales by bag type, and the uh, orange represents the uh, five pound bag, the uh, blue represents the one pound bag, and the gray represents the uh, 15 pound bag that we offer to retailers. Uh, we thank you and we welcome your questions. Um, you said that you're going to try to pursue a patent on the yeah. process. I'm trying to figure out what is patentable about the process. It seems that everything is you know, natural and, and common source. It's the way, um, the way we sterilize it and then we do some other things. We reintroduce uh, microorganisms um, 
can't really get too involved into it because I talk about it for a half hour now. It's a very in-depth process. But um, like I said, I haven't, I've done a lot of research. I haven't seen other, any other company do it. They usually just pile it up for six months or so, and then they introduce it to the worms. Um, we do it for 14 days, and then uh, we do our process, and then we compete directly with the worms and let them do their thing. Great job, guys. <clears throat> I think you know the whole issue of sustainability and organic and sensitivity to the environment has obviously exploded, and my wife's a gardener, and this would be something she would be interested in. I guess my question to you, though, is um, I, I have some concerns about your ability to uh, scale up in a quick enough way to meet demand if you're successful that way. And I wonder, too, if you're going to be able to get the return for the the OMRI certification. It seems like your other two competitors are doing just fine without it, and you reference the fact that it's a very expensive process, so I have some concerns there. And then my last uh, quick point is that uh, I would just caution you as you talk to a buyer in an organization like Whole Foods, don't hitch your wagon to a pony, uh, because they will try to control you, and people move in organizations, and one buyer may not like what another buyer liked. So, thank you. Yep. Um, so, we're scaling up, uh, we would like to scale up with the investment. Um, we'd like to scale up so it could be, you know, comparable to our competitors and we can distribute throughout New England. Um, like I said, there's a big pile of a lot of uh, mom and pop shops, a lot of garden centers are mom and pop shops. Um, and then when it comes to the OMRI side, um, you know, a lot of people want to see that kind of with this whole sustainability trend. Um, they want to see that you are using what, what you are claiming um, that is on your packaging. You know? um, and we can test that through lab testing and stuff. And just look, overall, just a lot of people going into organic gardening want to see proof that it has been certified by some sort of organization. And the OMRI is what the leading um, organic certification uh, organization. Um, I'm interested in, in some more detail uh, related to where exactly you are today and to your go-to-market strategy. Um, a couple of, of points. In your 2015-16 uh, monthly sales assumption, it has you uh, selling roughly $5,000 this month. Yeah. Um, it, was this done, is, is that current? And uh, a follow-on question to that is your, your ad in New Hampshire Home Magazine. Um, what are you hoping, when do you plan on doing that, what the lead time is? and uh, where you're gonna send customers that read that ad um, if you're not in a bunch of stores at the time you take out that ad. Um, so right now, currently, we are actually based out of my father's garage, and that's two bay garage. Um, we had to start somewhere, so um, we can produce a good amount out of there. Um, and then when it comes to the, the magazine, it's for about six months, and uh, you, know, you have to get in there six months prior, um, and then uh, in terms of them reading it, was that? Well, I guess um, if, it's, if, if it takes six months to get in and you're yeah. you'll be in for six months, have you already submitted the ad? So is it scheduled to be printed? And when it is scheduled to be printed, what retail, are you, are you doing direct sales or are you sending them to retailers? Are you currently located in any retailers? We're, um, we're not currently located in any retailers because we are um, compiling our products. One thing that we did want to make sure is we didn't want to run our product once we launch. So, like I said, we can make, there's a certain limit we can only make in a two bay garage. So we want to definitely compile enough that um, if we were to go to New Hampshire Home Garden, that was based off if we get the investors. Um, because once we get in there, you know, we don't want to just, if we sell out, then that could be very detrimental to our whole business. So, excellent job, guys. I mean, this is, as Joe said, all of us are thinking about how to do more sustainable gardening. <laughs> when I read through and I saw that you did, and you had the slide um, here showing uh, miracle Grow versus your product, Everton, I wondered how scientific was it, and can you do more validation that your product really will generate better growth and, um, for you know, any type of plant that you're gonna use it on? I think that's really important that people can actually see demonstrated value for it. That's so a, talk a little bit more about how you're gonna validate it. That's a great question. Um, when uh, AJ was talking about the table events, we're thinking about uh, having you know, glass, um, see-through glass uh, 
basis so you could actually see the root structures and verse our our product versus conventional fertilizer such as Miracle Grow. Um, just so you know the consumer can actually pick it up and just actually see that the roots system is way better than uh, Miracle Grow. And in terms of the scientific, uh, I took botany um, sophomore year, so I had to do some studies and grow plants. Um, so I knew about you know all the control, you know, everything was very controlled, uh, same amount of water exactly, um, same amount of light, uh, we had a timer. Um, but yeah, that is something that we would maybe put on our website, a video of us the time lapse, so people can show, they can show that, you know, we're doing everything as scientifically as possible. Great job. Thank you. I love the fact you have a multidiscipline team <coughs> that lead to success. I have a question. In the copy, you talked about some other, some, some other supplier was having difficulty meeting the quantities. Is, is that because this multi-month process that they use versus you, so that if you really scale up, you can handle it by putting more little boxes together? Okay, for us, yeah. the supply? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, well that's the supply. It's, it's an extremely um, seasonal business, especially in New England. Um, so during the winter months, that's the key thing about our continuous <laughs> process. We're going to be sure to stop down most of it, because obviously our sales are going to dip down drastically. Is it the shelf life? Uh, the shelf life, as long as it doesn't dry out, um, it's, it's, it's good forever. And that's so uh, we have this one way valve, that's what we're switching to. And um, if you look at it, you can pull it over there and push it out. Um, so if you wanted to reuse it and open it up and say air gets in, you can squeeze out, you can squeeze out the air um, so it doesn't dry out. Because once it dries out, the product is no longer uh, good for your garden. I think you're a little too close to what you're working on. I think if you're going to have the certification and you're going to have, be able to demonstrate an improved outcome with your product, I think you have jack your pricing up in your model. I don't think you should be equal to what's out there. I think you should have a premium. Thank you. Uh, once again, uh, uh, an operational issue. Uh, what's the capacity for each bin that you have? Uh, that's a great question. Worms actually eat half the body weight every day. Um, and like I said, they reproduce exponentially. So each bin can have up to 10 to 15 pounds of worms. So each bin can be producing uh, you know, anywhere from five to seven pounds a day. Um, so if we have a couple thousand bins, I mean, we can make a, a lot a day. I mean, it'd probably be um, a few thousand to you know, 10,000 pounds a day, which would be what we need for, and you go even higher once you get more bins. We don't have to buy more worms. <laughs> could, could you speak again to the, the production pipeline um, from when you get the material from the sources, the farms in New Hampshire, and right. to when you have product ready to bag? The pipeline uh, the, that we currently have? How long, yeah, how long does it take? Um, well, when we pick it up, the materials, um, it's bi-weekly, weekly, or uh, annual with our Vermont's more, um, you know, at the beginning or end of the season. Um, then we pick it up and we just process it for a 14 day hot pile, and then uh, we dry it out so we can store as long as uh, we want. And then when we want to uh, feed to the worms, all we just have to uh, do the process that we uh, do, is you know, rewet it and reintroduce microorganisms and such. Um, and, yeah. One of the um, parts that you said on your financials is that you need an investment of $750,000. Yeah. Quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, so, have you come up with like a plan A, B, or C? So, let's say you get a hundred thousand, what you could do, or two hundred thousand? Because um, I would say just jumping in, thinking that you need seven hundred fifty thousand, is a daunting task, and you could expend a lot of energies on that. That, whereas it might be better to grow iteratively and not go for that so much at the start. Yeah, if you were to get a small investment of about hundred to two hundred thousand, we would. Well, obviously, we wouldn't be able to pay salaries and hire employees, so a lot of it would have to be between uh, my partner and I. Um, but we could expand in the, we want to initially start in our hometown. Uh, we're based out of National New Hampshire. Um, and there's a few garden centers in National New Hampshire. Um, and that's our main target. And then we want to spread out, you know, more southern New Hampshire, um, northern Mass. Um, but we can scale it up year by year, I think. We can, this year, I think we can, I believe we can get into 25 stores without Investment, large investment, but they would be smaller stores, not large garden centers that are going to require pallets of this stuff. Because 
Each pallet weighs roughly 1,800 pounds, and that's, that's a lot of products. So we're going to be more selling the one and five pound bags if we work to get the large investment. As, as you're saying that, you're down in Nashville, which is, what, the second largest city in the state, I guess. Yep. Um, are there any local laws, bylaws, health restrictions, whatever, that, uh, that, that uh, might impact you? Um, the only thing with Nashville is, is if you, if your neighbors complain, I mean, uh, <laughs> you might have to you might, you might move your location, but uh, if, if your neighbors don't complain, uh, and you don't have a lot of traffic in and out, then you're okay, because there are a lot of businesses that are running residential neighborhoods. Um, yeah. Um, one more question. Um, the fertilizer that you plan on selling, is that 100% um, worm, worm casting, or is that a blend of worm castings and other um, organic material? Uh, it's mostly worm castings. It's hard to get it uh, really, really pure. But um, with me, just talking about the grist mill, that does um, turn into a bit like a flour powder. So it's going to get more fine and um, enable the worms to eat most of it. Because um, you want to get it as pure as possible. You're always going to have a little bit of material left over, like part, small particles, um, and a little bit of sand as well, because they do have uh, gizzards. They um, use the sand to process their. Uh, materials. Um. I love your package. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. My mom actually uh, she painted the little little circle the worms. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.